Hello and welcome to another Dennis Wick interview. My name's Brett Baker and uh, I'm here again with Daniel Ridder. And uh, the reason for that is that in our last interview, uh, I was so fascinated with the vast array of instruments that you can see uh, behind Daniel there. And I thought it would be great to uh, have a bit of a discussion about the different instruments and how they work and uh Daniel's motivation for all these instruments. So welcome, Daniel. Thank you very much for uh, coming to this interview today. Thank you, Brad. And uh, I'm happy to be back in the interview. So that's no, great. It's, Thank you. It's, <laughs> it's wonderful. So uh, I thought the best thing to do is to start with is uh, just a, a brief explanation of why you're interested in having so many different tubers. What, <laughs> what led to this? <laughs> uh, all right so um the tuba is one of the instrument of the youngest instruments of the brass uh family when you see a horn a trumpet or even a, a trombone uh they are much older than uh, than the tuba is so of course we had the serpent uh the bass horn the ophiclite before but the real tuba it's, it's a very young instrument it is uh, made and invented by 1835 so, and it is, was in uh, the first time was in Berlin and then 200 years, there are a lot of different types, uh, prototypes, different forms, different wells. Um, and that is very interesting what they are using uh, for uh, different occasions of uh, to play. So in different orchestras, of course. And um, so that is why I'm interested in uh, this yeah, low brass uh, instrument. So especially, of course, tuba from the Bohemian side and the side from Germany called Mark Neunkirchen. And that is very interesting because we have a lot of, of different types and a lot of evolution in a very, very, very short time. So, mm, yeah. And well, we'll have a look at a couple of the different examples, I think, anyway, as we go through this interview. But I wondered, um, it would be worth maybe having something to start with. We should um, start with your go-to tuba. If you were doing a, a concert tonight, which is the instrument you would pick up and play so that we can show that and describe the aspects of that before we look at some of the others? Of course. So in the normal, um, when I when I have to go for a concert, um, it depends at first of uh, which repertoire we play. Of course, for a brass quintet, it is very, very difficult when I tuba. So um, for brass quintet and smaller ensemble, I mostly use my F tuba. When we have um, typical German things to play, when I maybe I'm substitute in a symphony orchestra, we have Mahler, uh, Wagner, Strauss or something. Um, I will use, of course, the B flat tuba. It depends which piece. And, um, and when I'm sitting in my military band, in the concert band of German Armed Forces, I will use, uh, of course, the B flat tuba or the C tuba. And of course, it depends which repertoire uh, we play. So at the moment, we have this Polovic dances uh, in, the, in the program that's, uh, it's of course, good for B flat tuba, but I use it uh, on my, used to play on my C tuba. It's some of the technical things are easier to play. So we have some John Williams, uh, some of the heroes that is super on my c tuba so i just for that program i, I use my my c tuba and yeah um, and just to have a look at that instrument so is that a piston valve or a rotary uh valve tuba cool yeah ah, german, okay rotary, rotary. f2 uh, yeah super traditional german style uh we have six valves four for the right hand and two for the left hand so we have a full chromatic uh instruments to play Excellent. No, that's that's great. And so and that's quite a recent instrument. That's um, as in it's in the last it, that design has been around for the last 40 years, I would say. Yeah, more, more yeah. everything. So on the on the modern style F2, but everything it's based. It is on a very, very old uh, Chavani. Uh, F tuba. So the body size of this uh, F tuba was a little bigger than the old ones. We will see later one of I have one here, and um, so you can see the difference. Uh, but Chavani was um, was super in intelligent, and he tried out a lot of of things for low brass, for trumpets, uh, and so on. And um, so he thought, okay, we use a little 
bigger body and then we have of course a bigger sound so they um, they tried out different wealth uh, measurements and um, yeah in the end um, it is nearly the same body like this instrument and it of course is developed uh, it's like uh, with uh, um, Bob uh, Bob Tucci Robert Tucci then Perantoni so that is they they use this old Germany body to uh, develop one of the most popular German style rotary F tubas and it's still one of the the best instruments so mm. for for a lot of for a lot of things to play yeah very versatile and as you say used in lots of different uh, circumstances very Absolutely. flexible for solos quintets uh, exactly. Oh. No, that's that's uh, excellent. So maybe we should go from there to looking at uh, one of the oldest instruments that you've got, so we can see the the, the extremes and the difference between that one and of say course. the mo the modern F tuba. Yeah. So uh, we'll show one last time the modern F tuba. You see, I'm nearly <laughs> invisible after this modern F tuba, and when we see one of the uh, oldest F tubas, give me a second. Here we go. <sighs> You will see it's much very very much smaller and that yeah. is a very very typical um f tuba in made in berlin so uh, wilhelm wiebrecht made and invented the first f tuba full chromatic f tuba was in berlin it was around um 1835 because um the instruments like serpent uh ophiclite uh, and the basson was not strong enough for mostly of the military band repertoire what they're playing mostly they're playing marches uh, melodies from operas and uh, so that was not strong enough and he thought okay let's do something chromatic then we can play nearly everything and um, he made thoughts and voila after a few <laughs> the short time the f tuba was was invented with five wells so you can uh, you can play completely chromatically um, scales. So there was a yeah a revolution in, in the time. Made something and tried it out in its military bands in Berlin. And so there was very satisfied about that. And then the F tuba was on the way in all uh, yeah the bands, the orchestras, and um, yeah that was that was one of the first ones. So you, you see, it's a very, very small bell throat. It's no, it's no bell shape like here. Everything is very nice engraved. Mm. Uh, it's very, very typical German uh, engravings on the on the on the crowns. And um, so it is really it's good craftsmanship in the in the past. So very interesting is one of the first F two bus. They don't have any tuning slides. So everything. Is is completely it's in one it's one tube, so they had to measure very very carefully that they have a yeah, nearly good intonation. But it is a good intonation when you see it is like I don't know nearly two hundred years old. So that is very very interesting. So and absolutely. compared to your modern F tuba, is it quite difficult to play or is it quite free blowing? No, it is not. So it it looks strange a little bit. But it is um, it is not so we don't have uh, less sound than on a modern uh, F tuba. So it's not not so much. Of course, the ball size is smaller on the modern one. We have around 19, 19.5 millimeters, and that is uh, around sixteen millimeters. So it's even smaller. But the sound it's also it's very clear. <laughs> sound exactly Absolutely. yeah but then i guess as you say it's well it's a well-made well-crafted instrument yeah. and if you don't have tuning slides in it i guess then there's less yeah. resistance uh yeah so it is very open in all kinds of course with this small ball size when you play in the low register when you have you need a lot of pressure to to make it soundable of course 
but it's still you can play it so yeah yeah, yeah. no that's great that's that's really fascinating and then do you have oh yeah, yeah. i was going to say do you have a um a C tuber that we could have a look at, and uh, one of those that um, that you um, think is is interesting. Yes, I have. It's in the back, so um, I just take a. I can grab it. Uh, give me one second. That is my C tuba, and you see, it's not super big. <laughs> it is so in uh, when you compare it to the F tuba. So it is, of course, it's like a like a rock. But that is a yeah. That is a typical um, York style. C tuba, and that is great for a lot of of things I play, and I'm um, yeah I'm really happy with that kind of of C tuba. For most of the repertoire, you can play it. So, and in contrast to the uh, the F tuba that you just showed me, this is where you would actually use the the slides quite a lot. You'd actually physically oh, yeah. be moving them uh, as you play, which is a a, a big difference to uh, the tuba we just saw. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the modern instruments are, of course, bigger. The boss size is bigger, the bell is bigger, the main bow. Everything is like a really modern contrabass uh, tuba. And uh, in the in the history of the tuba, the instruments are going bigger and bigger and bigger. Everyone wants a bigger sound. Um, but we have this problem then with the with the tuning. So we need to, to tune up all the valves. So with, with the first one, I work a lot, and then we have... On the fourth one, you see, I have just a strap here when I put it on the bell, <laughs> so the slides are moving out. And um, yeah, but as a professional musician, you know, as a, as a trombone player, you can you can pitch everything on your slide very very carefully. So, and we have to use our our normal slides. So, yeah, is, and I yeah. guess like a trombone, therefore, there's a lot of experimentation and then muscle memory kicks in when you play a certain note you know how far to to move the slides yeah of course yeah that is not like oh okay let's play an f and i do that oh no wrong yeah. next time i will do it better so you know it's it's not super much sure you pitch uh, the note in the in the center and uh, that's that's very important of course let's have a listen to you playing an excerpt on the c tuba <laughs> And so we go from the C tuba, uh, then to you've got some, uh, say, more unusual tubas that we could have a look at as well. Yeah, yeah, I have a quite a lot of um, interesting looking <laughs> instruments. I, I, I would like to say. So at first, I have one. It's looking like um, uh, like a saxophone, but it's with a brass and with a with with a trombone mouthpiece. So. That is a very, very, very special one. It's like it's like that. So honestly, I don't have a name for that instrument, but it is made in in Italy and uh, in Milano. And I think there are some names engraved on the bell. It could be um, a special instrument for a special for a special people, I don't know, maybe um, a good player in the time or a band director or something. I don't know. Okay, for, yeah. For a special person, maybe. So and... I have never found any information in old catalogs or something. Yeah. And what key is that instrument in, Daniel? Oh, uh, that is in B-flat. It's, it's in B-flat. Like, uh, like a euphonium. So yeah. same like, uh, like a euphonium. And um, yeah. So it is is this restored completely, um, yeah, repaired. So everything is working, and very interesting is is the bell. It's not round a bell. It's like yeah, I don't know. It's like an oval shape, and this is also made with with a crans engraved. So it's a really beautiful mm -hmm. instrument, and it is um, a very funny sounding instrument. It's it's not a strong sound, of course, with this strange bell <laughs> but um yeah it is a really really cool instrument <laughs> I 
I've seen similar bells when you have the the double bell euphonium, for instance. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There is one in the back of uh, as well. So it's one from Con. I have an old double bell, but that is, um, yeah, it is a funny, funny instrument. <laughs> there are some details. They are not made in Italy because the the pedals and the valves. You see, we have engravings on the on the pedals and. Um, that one is uh, is a sign that uh, some of the Italian makers buy uh, some spare parts in uh, Bohemia. So some of these typical Czech instruments or Bohemian instruments have the same same uh, uh, same looking and the same materials on on the well section. So could be that it is a half half instrument. So they could some buy some spare parts in Italian. So. I don't know. Mm. So it's very difficult to, to do research when you when you don't have any information about that. But so if but if anyone who see the video knows something about that, please give me a call. It would, would be very interesting. Yeah, yeah, excellent. And is there a, another instrument that you wanted to show us that uh, maybe is um, of, of interest? Yeah. So it depends how many time we have. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. Yes, that is a very very interesting instrument. We'll go a little bit back. Ah, okay, yeah. <laughs> that is like a, I I call it my snail tuba. It is um yeah, it is a typical E flat instrument, and that is made in uh, Netherlands by uh, the factory is Kessels in Tilburg. So um, I know that Kessels made soprano. Um, alto, tenor, baritone, bass, and a counterbass instrument in the same in the same shape like that. So um, so there is a completely family, but I have never seen one. That's one I have that is a bass one, and I have a very old, not complete. Uh, it is an E flat soprano, I think. It's a very small one, in the same shape shape. Um, yeah, and that one sounds also very very. Um, modern so it's it's a normal modern sound i would like to to show you something found it from a from a colleague from belgium who has a also a huge uh, high brass collection and I thought ah, okay I don't need that I will take a look more for high brass and then I was for a visit at the weekend and yeah as, as suspected I was not going home alone I had that in the back <laughs> <laughs> and out of interest you've talked about the F the C we have B flat pitch uh, we have E flat tubers are there any in your range that are in another key uh, yes I have one give me a second I have uh, a tuba, which one is in double E flat. So it's a double size, like a normal E flat tuba, like a, the typical Besson or very, very famous in, uh, in the UK. So that is that is a double E flat uh, sub contrabass tuba. Uh, I think the completely uh, instrument is around eight and a half meters. So a normal B flat, the big B flat is around five fifty to six meters, hmm. and so that is um, that is a strange instrument. You can see in the back the old complete bows. It's, yes, it's, it's that's nothing for a parade. <laughs> I can promise. No, no. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's very heavy, I assume. Yeah, it's around 12, 12 kilograms. So. But it's completely handmade, and I think it's made by Boland and Fuchs in Czech Republic in the past. And um, so, this these people from Bohemia and Czech Republic really, really know how to make instruments. So, all instruments, all bows are handmade, are hand banded. So, I don't know how they did that, but it is. It is very good in tune. I used that in, in the orchestra once super low notes as doubling of the B flat tuba. Yeah, that was fun. But it's also it's very, very difficult to, to pitch the note in this completely length. So that is super, super difficult. But um that's I think I don't know if there is another one. 
I just saw a, a helicon in double E flat in um, United States, but here I think over Europe, that could be the only one. Wow. Um, yeah. So. Well, that's that's fantastic, uh, Daniel. Thank you very much for for sharing some of your uh, treasures in your uh, practice room today. It's been fascinating, and I'm sure you will get lots of emails and calls from this now. So apologies for that, but but I I know that there's a lot of tuba players out there that will be very interested in uh, all the different uh, makes and models and and uh, different sounds that you can get, and and the fact that there is such a huge array of tubas only having uh had the instrument for 200 years yeah that's right so that is because it is so interesting mm. so no thank you very much for your time yeah you're welcome thanks for asking me and thanks for uh for the interview <laughs> my pleasure <laughs>